Okay, as promised, what we have here is hopefully a full guide for you guys to set up your sim hub and how to set up these effects and get you up to speed and running and making sure that everyone can have the exact same effects that you looked at in the last video. And then also how you can play with them yourself and get comfortable uh, setting them up uh, and customizing it on a per car basis. Now, you may have heard of a channel called Race Beyond Matter. Absolutely fantastic YouTube channel, has amazing content. He's actually done a video on how to download SimHub um, and how to set up these profiles with the Sim Magic Haptics. So what I do is I drop a link in my description. So to install SimHub, go onto Google and type in SimHub and follow the links to the download page. Once it's downloaded, you can then open up the software and you'll be greeted with lots of pages. You're gonna to wanna to click the settings in the bottom left, then go into the plugin section that pops up and scroll down to the Shake It Motors section. You're gonna to wanna to tick that on and tick the box on the left to be able to see that in the options menu when you reload the game. So you click OK, the game reloads, sorry, SimHub reloads, uh, and then you'll be able to see the Shake It Motors section on the left-hand side of the screen. Once you click into that, you'll be greeted to all the different effects. Now we won't be using all of these, but this is where you can play with different effects, turn them on, turn them off, and then we'll talk through how to set them up. Um, now you're gonna wanna go into the motors output section, which is up at the top in the middle, and you're gonna wanna find the SimMagic P1000 pedals, turn those on, and you'll be greeted again to a whole list of different options. So whatever effects you enable in the first page, you need to enable in the second page. And here you can tune how strong these effects will be, whether you want them to be at 0% or 100%. Um, and you can also tune the frequency of each pedal. What I'm going to be showing you now is my specific settings for wheels lock and traction loss. Uh, for my default setting and also for the Porsche Cup car and hopefully explaining to you how that is going to apply to you and how you're going to be able to mess around with the settings. Um, now this is my Porsche Cup profile. Uh, one thing to clarify, you might have a lot of effects here. Delete all the ones you don't need uh, and you should just be left with wheels lock and traction loss, uh, both on separate pedals. Now the way to configure that is through the motors output. If you go into motors output, again, you should see here, hopefully there isn't loads of effects here. Uh, if you've got rhythm on the previous page, then you should just have what you need. So my traction loss is set up on the throttle pedal and my um, wheels lock is on the brake pedal. These are all set to 100. Make sure the front left, front right, rear right, rear left are on and make sure for the throttle that the right and the left are on. Here is where you set up the frequency. I like my throttle at 41 hertz um, and I like my brake at 23 hertz. And now when you go back into the effects profile, um, now with traction loss, the aim of this setting for me is to get feedback the minute the car is too sideways and then I should start correcting it again. And um, obviously you don't get that seat of pants feel when you're in a sim. So what we're trying to do with these settings is for uh, your pedal to let you know when the car is rotating too much and you're gonna lose it. So what that leaves you with here is a tricky game of creating this line here. So that looks like a very crazy line. So what your line will be is a very straight linear line from zero to 100. Now what that means is your pedal will be vibrating constantly and the more you're spinning, the more that line will, uh, the more that feedback will increase. But you don't want it vibrating when you're just slipping a little bit because that's perfectly fine. You've got enough grip. With the right amount of slip, you're quicker. But if you go too far, that's when you want the vibration to kick in. With a value of one, the feedback is linear. If you go below one, then it's an exponential and the feedback increases as the slip increases. Um, if you go above one, then it's the opposite. The feedback still increases, but not exponentially. It increases at a lower rate. So I would recommend going below one because you want the effect to ramp up when you're spinning you whack it back on the input gain at 1200 that increases how much gain and how soon that gain comes in so these are all kind of mathematically calculated so it makes it a bit awkward minimum force does what it says on the tin it affects what the force is when the pedal starts to vibrate so if you want it to vibrate really aggressively straight away you want to up the minimum force you can see it going up and if you want it to start off really low vibration when it comes in, I'd say don't go probably below 15 because you probably won't really feel below 15 um, in the pedal. So I, I set it on 50 because I want to feel a good amount of feedback the minute that car is starting to slip. Um, 
and then it can go up from there as you can see it's quite an aggressive curve so it goes up really quickly when i am losing the car now the threshold just determines how soon the effect will take place so um, how much slip is required before you're gonna start feeling any feedback so if you want it to happen really late into the slip you increase the threshold and if you want it to happen really early in the slip you decrease the threshold now you don't almost ever want to have the threshold on zero because that should mean basically anything will trigger the vibration and then you'll lose the point of having those vibrations just so everyone knows i've updated my settings since the last video and what i'm going to do now is just drop uh, two screenshots of my two different settings one's the default and one's the Porsche Cup right you find me here at Brands Hatch what you should be able to watch is a couple laps of how the vibrators react That should give you a good demonstration of how they work. I hope I've covered all the settings and you guys have everything you need to be able to set this up on your own. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to whack it in the comments and a like and subscribe would be fantastic. See you later.